without much further ado, let me go ahead and introduce the crew. We got JD in the building. Uh huh. Y'all already know, as usual, eight one Trey all day. We got Q in the building. Q. And we got yours truly, J Box, moderator of madness. Now, before we get into anything, we it's customary. We got to do this. We can't even start off a show without doing this. JD, give us the pod quote of the day. I today's pod quote of the day is extremely intriguing, and it's it's a little bit uh, offbeat from what you know the pod quotes that I typically give y'all. But the pod quote of the day is the response by Errol the True Spence when walking out of the Mandalay Bay when numerous reporters and people were asking him what is the holdup between you and Bud fighting and the quote goes like this and there is your pod quote of the day that is the pod quote of the day <laughs> <laughs> that is the pod quote of the day because numerous times when Spence was asked by a uh, shout out to ES News shout out to a number of other uh, uh, media outlets who were catching him as he was leaving out I think about maybe three people asked him hey man when y'all gonna make the fight what's, what's the hindrance what, what's stopping it and that man Errol Spence was just like <laughs> and that's that and that's your pie quote of the day what pie quote of the day I, I, it's uh the silence is deafening <laughs> as they say but uh we got one, one one last thing to do jd tell the people what to do i right, and y'all already know if you're down with the vibes hit the notification bell and subscribe Ding. like button smashing is a must all right man so we we've already kind of delve into it just a bit we dipped our toe in the water might as well just jump in man um saturday november 20th showdown of of, of, of welterweights one uh i, I don't want to call it a crossroad fight crossroad fight but this was a um make or break fight for both fighters right um i get the feeling that um the big news sean porter retiring maybe he would have fought on maybe just gave it one more go if he was able to get past uh, Crawford, because really, if he was able to get past Crawford, it's downhill from there, um, who's probably one of the tougher uh, welterweights in the division. And then for Crawford, we were looking to see if, hey, is he that good? Is he as good as advertised against a top dog? And I think we got our answer. So, gentlemen, without much further ado, go ahead. I'll kick it off the queue first, and then, J.D., go ahead and take his own. Hey, man. You know what I mean? First of all, first of all, man, um, Shout out to everybody, shout out to everybody in the comments that comment on the fight. It's, you know, we starting to get a little more traction. You know what I'm saying? And uh, matter, matter of fact, shout out to my man, the Bowtie Jeans. He wanted us to answer this question. Um, he want to know what we uh, what we thought about the, the stoppage. Do you feel like it was a bad stoppage? I'll start there. I feel like uh, the, the the fight was an amazing fight. Um, and it's, it went pretty much as I as I as I've been saying. I feel like don't be surprised if the, if, if Crawford stops Porter. A lot of people really, really um, didn't see that, but um, and you know, I don't think it was a bad stoppage. I'm gonna just say that first because Sean Porter, I didn't like the stoppage, but whenever the fighter don't complain about it, you know what I'm saying? And um, he obviously he said him and his dad already discussed him retiring before win or lose. He said he was retiring. With that being said. His father, his father uh, didn't see any, any more reason to take any more damage because, you know, Bud Crawford is the best closer in the sport, hands down. And um, once he gets you hurt, it ain't nothing but a matter of time. You know what I'm saying? So if you're not, you know, if you're not, if you're not planning on fighting anymore, ain't no need to take that, you know, and at, at that point of the fight. Um, but uh, amazing fight, man. I'm so happy this fight actually happened. And um, I just feel like, Sean, Sean, Sean Porter really, he really impressed me. He really impressed me in this fight because I felt like he was already, you know, one foot out the door. You know, uh, uh, you saw the thing I sent y'all with 50 Cent had him where he fell asleep at the podium doing, doing, um, when it was, uh, announcing a fight. Yeah, we well, was on yeah. ESPN. Yeah. yeah, you know, that was just, it was just funny, but I, I really felt like, uh, and then seeing all the, all the smiling he was doing at the press conference, but he's just that, he's just that guy. He's a jovial guy. And, um, 
I, I really didn't think he was going to be in the fight like he was. I really felt like that fight was so close. It took to uh, Bo Mac told him, told uh, Crawford to step up his activity level. And I already know what that meant. You know what I'm saying? I knew he was going for blood. But I felt like that fight was close, man. It, it might have been – it could it could have been going either way, even to the point of the first knockdown, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but uh, Bud Crawford just – he had those different levels, and he he really likes the action. You know, even the points where – where uh, cause Sean Porter hit him with some very tough shots, and, and you would tell he was feeling it, you know. But he's the type of fighter, he you know he go to laughing. What type of what type of my piece? He's showing that big my piece the whole time, you know. He laughing, and you know he bite down on it, and you know that's that that's a comfort zone for him, you know. And that's the and that's the difference between him and a lot of fighters. That brings the best out of him, you know. And um, amazing fight, and I just I just feel like Bud Crawford is what I what I already, I already thought. He's he's the He's the apex predator, man, out of the top guys. And um, and, and I think, you know, part of what we're seeing, I, I feel like Errol Spence might feel like that. You know what I'm saying? He he really feel like, well, I mean, he ought to know he's a dangerous fighter. But with him fighting the two common opponents now that uh, Errol Spence had faced, which is Kerr Brook, which, you know, uh, Sean, um, Errol Spence was able to get him out of there. I forgot what it was, like the ninth, tenth round. He was able to get him out of there by stoppage. But that was that was a, it was a damn good fight. And um, and then you know the main thing, then seeing what he did to Sean Showtime, Sean Porter, which was a razor thin fight with Errol Spence and Sean Porter, and Sean um, Bud had that he touched both of those guys at some point with one punch and knocked them. You know, it wasn't like an accumulation; it was just like a flash, a flash punch, and then they down and, and, and they pretty much hurt from that point on. You know, and um, that's the difference. You know, that's one of the differences. And you know, he got the he got the 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 toolbox the, to to go in those different places and you know the better movement and I just feel like he's he's the more complete fighter with with more than one punch knockout power and he really likes to dig in there and, and, and fight and plus he, he got the longer reach out of everybody in the whole in the whole division I think he got seventy four inches of reach and um you know that's just pretty much what I got man but I really I really didn't I didn't like the stoppage but the one thing I I didn't like about I, I really didn't like what what Kenny Porter I feel like he threw his son under the bus about his about his training and about his preparation for the fight because he fought a, he fought one of the best he fought the best game plan I could have seen him fighting and, and he was in he was in the fight. I just feel like the better man won the fight. I don't really think I don't really think of anything different that Sean. I mean y'all y'all let me know what y'all think, but I don't really see anything too much different he could have done. You know what I'm saying to win the fight. I just feel like the better man won, and that's that's what I got. Man, uh, I feel like I feel like it was an excellent fight. I, I got to salute Sean Porter. You know, hell of a career. You know, as a fighter uh, who's literally fought everybody in the welterweight division. Um, I don't think we can name a fighter in the welterweight division over the past five, six years that he didn't face. Um, so it's it's a salute to you know him being willing to step out and fight any and everybody. I will say, in watching the fight, uh. Sean Porter is extremely difficult because he's already shorter than a lot of them, right? And so with him being shorter than a lot of the fighters, including Bud, he's absolutely hard to time at times when he squats down and he uses that head movement. I will say that I legitimately saw Bud Crawford early on kind of, you know, struggled just a little bit. It, it wasn't anything where Bud really felt he was in any kind of trouble, but Sean was legitimately winning rounds based off, you know, doing the exact game plan that you would have expected him to do by dipping low, swimming in, smothering Crawford a little bit. And But I will say on the flip side for Crawford, while Sean fought the perfect fight, I think Bud, you could see from his posturing and his movement in the ring, that he knew that I really haven't turned it up to that gear yet. Like, I think Bud even kind of knew, all right, I might be losing around here or there. You know, th this, this is a dicey fight if you're probably looking at scorecards right now. But I think Bud knew he didn't really turn it up to that level that he could turn it up to and really get into a firefight and get him out of there. I think Bud was trying to see 
if he could simply just outbox Sean. And it's a testament to Sean Porter's boxing skills because you can't really just outbox Sean Porter. If you really sit there and you try to outbox Sean Porter, he could sit there and legitimately beat you or win a significant number of rounds. So I do think Bud was trying to just simply outbox him early on. And then, like you said, Q, we all heard Bo Mack around the ninth round tell, tell uh, Bud that, hey, look, man, it's time to step it up and, and, and put the pedal to the metal. And once Bud did that, and he started throwing four and five punches at one time, even though Sean might be able to slip the first two, he wasn't able to dodge all, all five of those punches. And sure enough, he got clipped by Bud. So I think when it got to that 10th, when he clipped him with that first uppercut that put Sean down, I really think that Sean wasn't overly phased by that. I think Sean hit the canvas and he got up. He was like, all right, he, he caught me. Because remember, he was down in the Errol Spence fight. A, a lot of people remember. Down late, in the Broner fight. In the Broner fight, exactly. Late in that fight when Broner caught him. So I don't think he was phased by that one. But I think that second knockdown, I will say that's the first time that I've ever witnessed Sean Porter legitimately be that frustrated after getting knocked down. When he got clipped that second time and he started pounding the canvas, I was like, whoa. I was like, oh, oh, Sean really shook by that one. His head is totally not in it. And I believe if we get into was it an early stoppage, I believe at that moment, that is when Kenny Porter, who's been his trainer for his whole career, I think that's when he knew at that point, my son is in trouble. Right. And, and when you take into account that they already had a discussion about this being the last fight, I think Kenny Porter was looking at it from a perspective of why allow Bud to smash him with three and four knockdowns, maybe even possibly knock him out cold when this was already the, the last fight for him. And he's got my son compromised with this second knockdown. So I think at the end of the day, man, I don't believe it was a premature uh, stoppage. I think it was a close fight up until that point. But when you factor in the fact that it was a two knockdown round in the 10th and everybody knows how vicious of a closer that Bud is, Finish you him. have to protect you have to protect your son in that particular uh, situation. And lastly, I'll say. For people who were sitting there saying that it was an early stoppage, here's what Kenny Porter knew that a lot of other observers knew. Even Kenny Porter, who's been watching Bud his whole career, even though we might say it was even, or maybe you could say Porter was up early in the fight, even Kenny Porter knew, hey man, Bud going to turn this up. Even, even Kenny knew, all right, my son might be close. He might be close in this thing, but we ain't seen the best of Bud just yet. No, and no, so no. at that point, he saw that 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 switch get flipped. And at that point, Kenny Porter knew, all right, it's time to go ahead and bow out of this thing and protect my son and, and just go, ride off into the sunset of, of, of our careers post post boxing. So I think it was an excellent fight uh, by both fighters, man. Salute to Bud Crawford. He's the first one to stop Sean Porter. Um, salute to Sean Porter for being the one who was willing on that PBC side to step out of the house and face no uh, anybody. So that, that, that's my take on it, you know, for the fight last Saturday night. And that's a damn good point you, excuse me, one second. A damn good point you brought you brought up, man. That's something I forgot to mention about him, about the frustration. And, and that's absolutely right. Right. Like when, when, because that, that threw me for a loop, man. I really was like, he was frustrated. He was mad frustrated. Bro, like, right. seriously. And I, part, part of the reason I wasn't sure if he already knew, saw his dad coming with the towel. But nah, as soon as he got, as soon as he was dying for anything, yeah, he, he was, was finding on the, the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, but yeah, that's, that's absolutely a, a great point, man. Yeah. The, the only problem I have with a stoppage, I don't know if you guys remember a couple years back, um, Miguel Cotto versus, Saddam Ali, right? Um, if this is your curtain call, um, I don't know. I, you know, do you want to? I don't. I don't imagine any fighter wanting to go out, go out on a knockout. But then again, um, 
you know, a father protecting his son, um, I, 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 I do appreciate, and, and, and even in the general sense of a fighter being protected by their trainer, uh, I'm, I'm in support of that. But um, just for seeing the 10th round myself, you know, I don't think he was compromised to the point where he couldn't have possibly made it to the 11th. Now, would he have got knocked down again in the 11th and it probably got finished? Reasonably so. But just as a fighter, you know, just looking at it, I would think, you know, it would be something in the back of his head like, damn, I can lose, but not by knockout. Sort of. And, and I harken back to just the Miguel Cotto fight um, when he his retirement fight with Saddam Ali. Um, so many times we watch the sport, you know, nobody has the Michael Jordan finished to, to their career. Right. Where, you know, you got um, Floyd in this scenario, but Floyd didn't necessarily finish it on a George Foreman Ali type win. He, you know, um, really did the money grab sort of thing. So as he's the TBE self-proclaimed and, 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 and rightfully so, um, you always look at fighters and the way they end their careers and it never ends. It's never that movie ending for fighters for the most part. Um, and so, so for that reason, the, the stoppage and the end of Sean Porter's career is par for the course. But if this is your last one, if that was his last one, you know, I, I don't know. Me personally, I I, I kind of want to keep going on. But when the fighter doesn't complain about the fight being stopped, you just right. got to tip your cap and um, go ahead and, and, and say, well, you know, that's what he had. He gave what he had and that's all he had. And um, tip your cap to both fighters and just uh, thank Sean Porter for all the, the good fights that he's given us. He's been the underdog numerous times and he's always showed up, um, which to me is, 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 speaks to not just his character as a fighter, but just having, having had met Kenny Porter and Sean on multiple occasions, um, guys to be seem, uh, seem like they're of high character and, uh, guys that were really, a, a gift to the sport of boxing. But on the oh, flip man. side of this, I do want to address Errol.